Hi. Today I have prepared for you a very interesting story with an unexpected ending. Watch until the end. Happy viewing. There is no such thing as a woman who is faithful to the end. With very few exceptions, every man knows this. Only one worries the other makes peace, and the third tries his best to ignore it. I lived with my wife for 40 years. We got married when I was 20 years old, and she was 19. Things happened, and fought, and made up, but I was sure that in all that time we never once betrayed each other. Nevertheless, wherever fate threw me, she was always there for me. We had two beautiful children, a son John and a daughter Catherine. Now they are adults, both with families and children of their own. I was sure we had a peaceful, peaceful old age ahead of us, surrounded by our beloved grandchildren. I am a doctor, I served 25 years in the army, reached the rank of colonel in medical service, and it has been 10 years since I retired. To this day, I continue to work in a private clinic. To tell the truth, I do not often hold a scalpel in my hands. My wife also still works in an advertising firm. She is a designer by training. We have no problems with finances and we just worked for our own pleasure. I've been to a lot of places during my service. I was in Africa almost a year in Mongolia, Vietnam, but I hardly ever saw those countries. The job of a doctor is almost round the clock. But every time I came home, I knew my loving wife and children were waiting for me. At least I thought so. Alas, as it turned out, that was just wishful thinking. Despite my age, my wife managed to maintain her natural beauty. She always took care of herself, which allowed her to keep her girlish figure and face without a single wrinkle. When we walked side by side, she was mistaken for my young mistress. The contrast was too stark. A young blonde and a gray-haired mature man. A major with a young mistress. My wife was very amused by this contrast, and it flattered me too. But as it turned out, I was having fun for nothing. It all happened one rainy November evening. Have you ever noticed that the events that change our lives for the worse happen on rainy autumn evenings? It's as if dying nature is trying to drag us down with it. It was late fall. I was sitting at the kitchen table going through my papers looking for my medical records. I was due for a checkup at the health center on Monday and I needed to find my immunization records. My wife wasn't home. She had gone into town in the afternoon to buy groceries and cook Sunday dinner for us. I went through my old papers for a long time and suddenly found something that really shocked me. It was an excerpt from my wife's book. It dated from the period when I was on a long business trip and hadn't been home for a year. Just four years after the birth of my daughter's discharge, it was about my wife's pregnancy and premature birth. Tests and ultrasound results. It turns out that she had a premature six-month-old baby at this time. After three days he died, Next came the tests on her and the baby. Blood type, rhesus factor, and so on. So the baby was R negative and blood type 3. I felt like at least a closet had collapsed on me. There was no way I could be the baby's father. Nastya and I are blood type O and I positive. So our baby together couldn't have those blood types. Only type A and rhesus positive. And finally, the baby couldn't have originally been mine because I just wasn't in the country at the time. I stared blankly at the discharge form for a long time and had no way to piece together the thoughts that had escaped. My wife was unfaithful to me. While I was away from home, she managed to get pregnant and almost had a baby. But by whom? Until half an hour ago, I had been sure that I had a solid family, a loving wife, and an impeccable future. Now there was only ruin behind me. Finally, I managed to pull myself together. I carefully put the certificates back where they belonged and I hid the statement I had found. The most important thing is to calm down. The fact that Nastya was cheating is a documented fact. Frankly, I had a desire to have a showdown immediately after the return of his wife, but I wanted to sort everything out first. The kids were all clear here. Both John and Catherine were blood type O yes, and so it was obvious that they were mine. They both looked like me young. I had no doubts. I was their father. But the thought didn't make me feel any better. I couldn't understand why she did this to me. We had married for love, and I had been courting her for almost a year. Other women did not exist for me, although I had an attractive appearance and was not deprived of the attention of the opposite sex. But for me all my life, 
there was only one woman. During our life together, I tried to surround my wife with care and attention. Sometimes it seemed to me that I had no other single life. My wife was everything to me and more. I went out to the balcony for a breath of fresh air. When I looked down in the light of a dimly lit street lamp, I saw a car pull up outside our doorway. After a while my wife jumped out of the car and a man followed her. He opened the back door and took out some packages. My wife gave him a quick peck on the cheek, took the bags and went into the driveway. The man flopped down in the driver's seat and the car slowly drove out of the yard. The farther away, the merrier. The front door lock clicked. My wife's voice sounded unexpectedly loud and I realized that I couldn't stand it and started to figure things out right away. She kissed me on the cheek and I heard the fresh smell of alcohol. I tried my best to speak calmly. She looked at me with some kind of unfamiliar look. To occupy myself and calm myself, I got up and got a bottle of whiskey out of the cabinet. My wife looked at me frightened. It took a great effort to keep my composure and not turn to shouting. I poured myself a whiskey and said, sit down, I have some questions for you. I pulled the ill-fated transcript from under the table. Explain what it is. I placed the document in front of my wife. She carefully turned a few pages and quickly jerked her hand away. She looked up at me with eyes that began to fill with tears. She was silent for a while, and then suddenly she said in a surprisingly calm voice, it had to happen sometime, and maybe it's a good thing it happened now. In an even calm voice, she told me that in my absence, as she emphasized, a very long absence, she had met a young man whom she had fallen in love with. He was 11 years younger. She couldn't help herself. At first, she ran to him for a date, and then she took the kids to her mother's house, and he moved into our apartment with her. They started living like husband and wife, and from the ethereal love sessions, she got pregnant and he proposed to her. To her, a married woman, the mother of my two children. She even secretly hoped that I wouldn't come back at all, and then everything would work itself out. Then we'd get married and be together, but it didn't work out. The baby was born premature and died three days later. She burst into tears at this point. My understanding was that she did not care about the remaining children. After the baby died, the relationship between them cooled and she said, they became estranged from each other. Then a young woman appeared on the horizon and her lover finally left her in pursuit of new adventures. When I returned, she met me as if nothing had happened. And all the years that followed she diligently played the role of loving and caring wife. I was shocked. To be honest, for a while I lost the ability to think and speak at all. I stared at the wall in silence and not a single thought crossed my mind. I just stared blankly at one point. But that wasn't all. Six months ago, her heartfelt friend showed up in our town. Passion flared with renewed vigor. Turns out she had loved him all these years, and my wife fell into his arms. Anyway, they have been dating all this time, and she wants to start a new life in which there is no place for me. She lived with me for 40 years, gave me her best years. And now that the kids are grown, she wants a fresh start with the person she loves. Saying all this, she knew full well that with every word she said, she was just killing me. For a second, she reminded me of an executioner indifferently doing his job. For so many years, she'd been trying to trick me. If I had not found the statement, I probably would not have guessed anything further. Without saying a word, I got dressed, threw some things in my bag and went out. Autumn was waiting for me outside. I breathed in the damp air with my chest full. I threw my bag on my shoulder and slowly wandered down the sidewalk covered with yellow leaves. I felt like smoking. I gave up smoking 20 years ago at the request of my wife. She was very concerned about my health and it was quite late. The city was trying to forget itself in an anxious sleep. The windows of the houses were barely lit and only the streetlights came down with a dim glow. I walked slowly past the black houses trying not to slip on the wet fallen leaves. Man, do you have a smoke? I turned around and fell into darkness. Bright light burst into my eyes. Well, finally, a man's voice said from very close by. I turned my head with difficulty. Welcome back. My boss, not hiding his joy, looked at me. Aya. The words were hard for me to say. Yes, you are in our clinic. Tonight you were taken to the emergency room with a brain injury. We took you in and operated on you right away. The surgery was successful, 
and you are back with us. Your children and your wife we informed. The latest events made my heart clench again. My wife. I no longer had a wife. Two weeks later I was discharged. My ex came to see me twice, but I refused to see her. At first I rented a small apartment not far from the clinic where I worked and began to get used to single life. The breakup with his wife had a twofold effect on me. On the one hand, of course, the pain of betrayal, and on the other hand, some still unclear prospects. Then there was a divorce, and I was left not only without a wife, but without my home. The children took a neutral position, but it was clear that they were more on their mother's side. I began to operate again. In my work I tried to numb the pain of my soul, and I succeeded. About two months later, an old friend called me and asked to meet. Remember a few years ago, I borrowed a large sum from you. He started the conversation. I remembered it. Three years ago, a comrade had borrowed a rather large sum of money from me. He was having serious problems with his business and asking for help. I had just sold my mother's apartment at the time and I had the money. When I gave it to my friend, I did not specify a deadline for repayment, realizing that the friend simply could not pay the money back immediately. Thanks for helping me out back then. I invested your money in the business, and as of today, it's paying good dividends. He held out a bank card to me. This is my debt with interest. It's five times the amount you lent me back then. Yes, that was very helpful. I bought myself a small cottage not far from the city and a car. I had no time to do the housework, so I hired a helper. She was almost 15 years younger than me. She was quite a young woman who had already been married. She had lived with her ex-husband for almost 20 years. They had no children due to her infertility and her husband eventually left her for someone else. A neighbor told me all this. The employee herself did not talk about it much. I had no plans with her. She was nothing more than an assistant. Almost half a year passed like that. One day I was chopping wood and I felt sick. I had a terrible headache and I fainted and woke up in the hospital. She was sitting next to my bed. She was the one who called the ambulance when the doctors arrived. She sat holding my head in her lap. I was fine. Cranial brain injuries just don't go away that easily. After that incident I began to look at her with different eyes and only now I realize what a beautiful woman she was. Somehow our relationship naturally evolved into intimacy. At one point I asked her to marry me. We got married in the fall. I knew we couldn't have children so I felt free to make love to her. About three months after the wedding, she started feeling bad, vomiting, headaches. I immediately took her to my clinic. Imagine my surprise when I found out that she had been pregnant for almost two months. That's when I realized one truth. If fate closes one door in front of us, it immediately opens another. Anyway, life was getting better. And then one day, just before New Year's, my ex-wife called me. We need to meet. She said in a pitifully pleading voice. I made a reservation at a restaurant. She sat across from me, her whole expression of humility and remorse. Forgive me, there hasn't been a day that I haven't thought of you. Her eyes began to fill with tears. I made a terrible mistake. I betrayed you. Our family, our children. She kept talking and I stared silently at my once madly beloved woman. The woman I would not hesitate to give my life for. The woman who, without hesitation, had twice cynically betrayed me. The woman who lied to me for 20 years. The woman who cut me out of her life and left me for another man. And now she has suddenly come to their senses and is trying to get back with me. My ex kept saying that her time without me had made her realize how much she loved me, that she understood only now that I was the only real man in her life. I looked at her brightly painted lipstick and the mouth that awaited my ears with such sweet words and imagined her kissing and caressing her lover with it. Did she really think I would believe her words, that she was confused, that she didn't know what she wanted? That this woman who cheated, cheated on me, had a child with her lover, left me and spent her free time with another man and never thought of me. She came back because, it turns out, she only loved me. In her own time, she found an excuse for her meanness and did not hesitate to leave me. She had had her fill of sensual pleasures with her lover, having been in his bed more than once, and she had coldly planned the moment to give me one last fatal blow. And now she was here to offer me the only precious thing she had left, but had already taken advantage of her lover. She realized he only wanted her for fun, and as long as she had the money. 
When she realized this, she came to me, hoping to try to get back what she had lost. God, do I seem so stupid to her, ready to believe all her lies? I listened in silence to her remorse-filled monologue. I had nothing to say to her, you know. I didn't revel in her humiliation or gloat. I even felt kind of human for her. It's a shame, after all, 40 years together. But it was time for our meeting to mend. And at that moment my phone rang. My girlfriend called me and asked where to come and get me. As I came out of the restaurant I turned around. My ex-girlfriend was standing with her hands pressed to her chest, looking at me through the festively decorated shop window. Around me, people were bustling and hurrying somewhere. Life went on. I got in my car and turned the ignition key. The engine was sticking out smoothly and serenely. I turned left and a few seconds later joined the stream of cars which were always rushing around. So that's the story. Subscribe to the channel and click on the bell so you don't miss new stories.